Thank you for listening to this week's message from Go Church. We hope it encourages you today. For more information about Go Church, check us out online at letsgo.church. We hope you enjoy today's message. To respond to a couple of questions as a team, okay? So a couple of trivia, easy trivia questions, and I want to see if you can answer. What color of belt do students get when they start karate? White. Very good, very good, very good. (laughs) Okay, so on the karate theme, what is the master color typically of a karate belt? Black. Yes, good, good. A lot of people got the black. A couple of other questions I want you to answer today. What do you get when you walk across the stage at high school graduation? What do they put in your hand? Diploma. Yes, very good. Very good. Diploma. What do most people wear who are married? Yes, wed- wedding ring. That's good. What are the, what's the kind of bracelet that people will bring to Taylor Swift concerts? Friendship bracelet based on what song what was it it's the adult in the room they know you're never too old for a t swift song that's right so listen all of these things right the friendship bracelet the wedding ring especially in my in my case this wedding ring black silicone does not cost a lot The friendship bracelet does not cost a lot. These things are symbols, right? Now, you might have some symbols at home, maybe things like diplomas, certificates of achievement up on a wall. Maybe you've got a wedding ring. Maybe you've got a couple of karate bells from back in the day. Maybe you have medals from running marathons, half marathons, a quarter marathon. I don't know if they give up medals for quarter marathons, but they hang there, right? These medals are cheap. But they mean something. So when you look at this medal, you look at this wedding ring, you look at this karate belt, it's not just the thing. It represents something that is meaningful for you. So when you look at that diploma, the diploma in and of itself is a piece of paper. It doesn't cost a lot, right? You paid a lot for that piece of paper. But when you look at it, you think about all the hours, all the effort, all the projects, all the years that you put into something, that piece of paper means something to you. It's symbolic of something important to you. This ring, it doesn't cost a lot of money, but it represents something that's worth everything to me. So this morning, I want us to get into our minds the power of a symbol. We are going to do communion. We're going to take communion as a team, as a family today. And communion is symbolic. It's not just a juice, cracker, and a prayer. It's not how much that juice and that cracker costs. It's what it represents. And so today, as we get into communion, I want us to learn. I want us to grow. I want us to think about the power of symbolism in our life, and it brings us to the one big thing. Grab your communication card, write this down, right across the top. This is what we're going to do today. I will always remember what Jesus has done for me, and the Bible talks about communion like this. Do this in remembrance of me. So when we take communion, normally we have communion elements here on this table and here on this table today. They're underneath each seat. When we take communion, it's a moment to remember what Jesus has done for me, what Jesus has done for us. But I want us to go deeper today and to think about what does communion represent? What does this juice represent? When I take this cracker, what does this represent? There's a lot of history with this, a lot of powerful symbolism. And Jesus, the night that he spent with his men, his disciples, the Last Supper, they took communion. They were celebrating something from their culture called the Passover. So I want us to get into this, okay? During communion, during today, we're going to look in three directions. Everybody say three. Three directions, okay? We're going to look backwards into the history of our life. We're going to look backwards and see where God has been faithful. We're going to look upwards. We're going to give God some praise, some adoration. But also as we take communion, we're going to look forwards in time. So in communion, it's like all of these three directions are condensed into a moment. It's not just juice cracker and a prayer. 
There's something else going on. There's deeper meaning that we have to understand. And when we do understand it, it becomes meaningful. It's not just the ring. It's what the ring represents, okay? So in Matthew 26, it says this. Okay, before Jesus was taken, before Jesus was arrested, before he was crucified, this is Passion Week. This is Matthew 26. Jesus tells his disciples, go into the city to a certain man and tell him, the teacher says, my appointed time is near. I'm going to celebrate the Passover. Everybody say Passover. Everybody say Passover. This is super key today. The Passover, I'm going to celebrate it with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and prepared the Passover. So what is the Passover? This is something that the Jewish people would celebrate every year. This is something that Jesus wanted to celebrate with his men. He's getting together. This was the last meal or the last supper that they would have together before he was taken away to be crucified, to give his life for our sins. This was the last moment, the last meal. This is a celebration. is very important to them. So Jesus got together. They got all of the elements for this moment. And in this moment, they were looking backwards in time. Remember early we said we're going to look backwards, we're going to look upwards, we're going to look forwards. So Jesus and his men, they get together, they're at the table, they have these elements set up, and they are looking backwards in time to celebrate a moment of rescue, a moment of God's faithfulness for the children of Israel, Israel, the Hebrew people, okay? So check this out. This is Exodus 12, 12 and 13. What we have to understand is it's hard for our modern mind to wrap around this concept The Hebrew children, they were slaves. They were in bondage. Pharaoh, Egypt, I imagine torture, persecution, killing. They were property to the Egyptians for 400 years. And even this this time span can be hard for our mind to wrap itself around. What is 400 years? Just to give you an example, the United States of America is only 248 years old. They were slaves for generations and generations and generations. People that could only remember slavery, probably turning into a bit of an identity. Like we've been this way, what seems like forever. It just is how it is. They started to cry out to God. God heard their prayer. He raised up Moses and God is using Moses and combining The obedience of Moses with supernatural acts called plagues. So God was raining down pain on the Egyptians. Like Moses is going and saying, let my people go. God is backing that up with boom, plague, plague, plague. And then it leads up to the most serious and the most powerful of all the plagues. And we're going to read about this in Exodus chapter 12. God is compelling Pharaoh through one last plague to let the people go. It's verse 12. On the same night, this is God speaking, on the same night I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn, both men and animals, and I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. Little g gods of Egypt. I am the Lord you got to work together and expand your mind on this. This is so foreign to us here. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. This is where the idea of Passover comes from. I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. God had commanded the children of Israel to kill a lamb without defect. And this is the way it always was in the Old Testament, which is, again, so strange to us, so foreign to us. The way that sin was taken care of or was forgiven in the Old Testament was a sacrifice given by faith. 
Sin was so serious that even in the very beginning with Adam and Eve, when they sinned, when they did their own thing, when they walked away from God, when they realized that they were naked, they didn't even realize it until they sinned and disobeyed God and chose to do their own thing. And that's why I always say this, laundry is proof of original sin, okay? Before sin, no laundry. After sin, you got loads and loads of endless laundry. It is a reminder of sin. So God provided skins for them to wear. What do you think that came from? So from the very beginning, life paid a price for the vandalism of sin, the way that it would hurt and mar God's creation, other people. And so innocence would pay the price. And without the remission Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. It was always a very costly thing. And so animals would pay the price. And in faith, the sacrifice given, God would forgive sin. And so he's saying, take a lamb, slaughter this lamb, take the blood, put it over the frame of the door. And when this angel comes by, it's going to see that. It's going to pass over you and go into Egypt and to execute this plague. This is heavy. Admittedly, in our culture, this is weird. This is strange. They would get together and they would remember. So imagine Jesus and his disciples in this moment. They are celebrating Passover. They were looking backwards and thinking about this. For their nation, for their people, thinking about God, bringing them from bondage to freedom. Looking back and saying, man, do you remember 1,445 years ago, when God rescued our people out of Egyptian bondage, had been there for 400 years. Do you remember when that plague passed over our people and God executed his judgment on Pharaoh and on Egypt? The Passover, it was not so much the celebration of the bondage of Egypt being broken or death of Egyptians, but more God's faithfulness in bringing them into freedom looking back and remembering that God is faithful. So for me, for you, today, as I was getting ready for this message, I'm sitting at my desk and I'm writing, and I just take a minute and I'm just reflecting all the times that God has been faithful. Back when I was a child, back when I was a crazy teenager, back when I was an even crazier college student, him being faithful, bringing the right people at the right time, the right parents, the right conversations, the right friends, steering me towards the kingdom, steering me towards forgiveness. Even when I look back and I can see times of me being faithless, me being unfaithful, God being faithful. When I was crazy, when I was doing my own thing, God was faithful and loving and reaching out to me. And I bet today, if you look back into your past, you can see God's faithfulness. He's always been there. He's always loved you. He's always had a plan. Do you believe that, Go Church? God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the same God that was faithful for them 1,400 years before this moment with Jesus and his men is the same God who is faithful to us today, now, in 2024. His character does not change. Circumstances change. The character of God does not change. So Jesus and his men are looking back, and they are thanking God for his faithfulness. Now remember our one big thing. I will always remember what Jesus has done for me. So they looked backwards, and now... We're going to look upwards. So I want you to imagine Jesus and his disciples are around the table. They would have celebrated the Passover with four different cups of wine. Now, these cups represented different things. So on your communication card, I want you to write this down. It's the different cups and what they mean. The first cup is the cup of sanctification. They would have done this according to Jewish tradition. So the first cup represented sanctification. Sanctification is an idea, theological concept of something that is set apart for a holy purpose. It's special. The idea of drinking out of this cup and saying, this night is different from any other night. It's not just any old regular night. It's not just any old regular moment. This is a little bit different. When thinking about this, I go back to my childhood and I think about my mom's china cabinet. How many of you had parents that had a china cabinet? 
As a kid, what is the rule? Don't touch it. You touch it, you die. <laughs> so I remember I'd always like look through, it was always like a glass front, right? Like you look and you're like, oh, look, special dishes I can never use. <laughs> so I remember one Saturday morning, I would get up early on Saturdays, mom and dad would sleep. I would watch cartoons and then I would play the original NES, Super Mario Brothers and Excite Bike. That's what I would do on Saturday mornings. That was my routine. I'm 46 years old. I'm unashamed. That's what I would do. So when I would eat in the morning watching cartoons, there's nothing better than cereal, right, as a kid in the morning. So one morning, just out of nowhere, I passed the china cabinet, and I was like, ooh, <laughs> shiny. And I, and I dared to open it. And I got a big bowl because, you know, you never eat cereal in a small bowl. It's more like a trough. So I didn't get a, like a cereal looking bowl. I got like a serving bowl of some, of some type. I poured in whatever the sugariest cereal we had. It was probably, my mom would never buy really good cereal. I'd have to go over to Becky's house as a teenager because her mom would buy things like Cocoa Pebbles, Cocoa Puffs, all the cocoa things. And I'll go over there and eat that. My mom, you know, she probably went crazy and she would buy Honey Nut Cheerios. Ooh. If she was really feeling generous back in the day, it was like apple cinnamon Cheerios. And then if I was being punished, it was grape nuts. It was like, here, eat gravel. <laughs> and I, I just filled it up and had a grand old time until mom came down and reminded me, we don't you China for eating. Put it back up. So the china was only used for special occasions, special dinners, special things. You don't just pour your Honey Nut Cheerios into the china bowl. That's why this night, I think, began with a cup of sanctification. It's saying, listen, remember, this is special. We're celebrating a special moment to remember a special time when God rescued us. So today, in this space, as we get ready to take communion, I want us to begin to get ourselves into that mind frame. This is a special time. This is the beginning of Passion Week. This is the week leading up to Easter. Maudi Thursday is typically the day where you celebrate with communion. You remember through communion. And that word is, that Maudi is a Latin word for commandment. This idea of God, Jesus giving a new commandment during this time. It's like a new commandment I give you, love one another. We're celebrating this today. So get yourself in a space that this is a different time. This is a special moment. This isn't just like any other regular Sunday. The second cup was the cup of deliverance. Write that down. And again, not to celebrate that the Egyptian had been punished and killed, but rather to celebrate God bringing them out of slavery to be delivered. This is the second cup. Now let's jump to the third cup. This is the cup that I believe changed the game. This is the cup where everything became different. This is the cup that the disciples would have went for out of tradition and history, but I believe Jesus said, hold up, wait a minute. This is all about to change. This cup is about to become a different thing, different understanding, a fulfillment of Old Testament ideology in New Testament embodiment of Jesus Christ and moving forward. The third cup as redemption. Write this down. So, of course, Old Testament is we're going to celebrate being saved from the plague of death. We're going to celebrate the angel passing over the nation of Israel because of the blood that was covering the door frame. It's the pass over, this angel passing over. But this is where I believe Jesus said, stop, wait a minute, something's about to change. In 1 Corinthians, I believe, we read about this. This is chapter 11. Jesus says this, this cup. I believe that when Jesus said this cup, it was the third cup of redemption that he was talking about. I imagine him either sitting there, maybe standing up and saying this cup. Maybe he picks it up off the table or he's sitting there and maybe he picks it up. He says, listen, men, this cup. This is about to change. This cup is the new covenant. Not in Old Testament lamb sacrifice blood. No, no. This is in my blood. Do this. Whenever you drink it in remembrance 
of me. This juice is symbolic of the blood of Christ, the sacrifice of Jesus. Imagine him holding this up and the disciples still not really understanding what was happening. Moment of awe, but also moment of of confusion. Jesus saying, I'm doing away with the old style. In so many ways, the Old Testament Like if you go to a movie and you go there early, like I do, because you want to see the sneak previews of movies that are going to come, I like previews. Like you go there and you get a sneak preview of movies that are going to come out, right? It's not the whole thing. You don't watch the whole movie. It's a sneak preview of what is going to happen later. In many ways, the Old Testament is like that. It's a bit of a sneak preview of what was going to happen in the New Testament, a glimpse of what was going to be fulfilled in the life of Christ. So imagine this. Jesus knows this, but his disciples don't really understand this yet. Jesus is saying, this is the cup of redemption. This is going to be my blood that is going to flow out as I sacrifice myself for your sins, the sins of humanity. No longer is it about some Old Testament system. No longer are there going to be things like animal sacrifice. No, that was just a sneak preview of the ultimate sacrifice. And you see, it starts to make sense. Because when you read the New Testament and you read about Jesus' cousin, John the Baptist, seeing Jesus for the first time, and he says, behold, look, look, guys, look, behold, that's the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Jesus is saying, this is the moment where we're doing away with old through my death and resurrection. We're bringing in the new. What an amazing moment. So when we take the cup today, I want us to remember the words of Jesus. This juice represents the sacrifice of Jesus' life. In the beginning of this holy week, It's no surprise to me that the fourth cup, it represents praise. You start to understand it, man. When you think about how Jesus changed the game, how he decided to lay his own life down. That whole Old Testament sacrificial system just pointing to the ultimate sacrifice of Jesus laying his perfect, without blemish, without sin, life down for you and for me. When we take communion, we think about all these things. It just brings special significance when you think about why we do communion. It's to remember. So we've looked back and we've looked up. The communion is so powerful because it doesn't just look back and it doesn't just look up. It doesn't just take what's happened in the past and bring it to the present. It also has this future element, which a lot of times we forget about. Over 300 times, this is an average of one verse in every 26 in the New Testament. It talks about the return of Christ. Newsflash, Jesus is going to come again. We don't know when If somebody says that they do know, they're wacky, (laughs) okay? If they're like, I know he's coming on this day. Nobody knows, okay? Nobody knows but the Father. The Father knows. Nobody else knows. This is how it's going to be. I want to share a couple of scriptures. So first of all, 1 Corinthians chapter 11 says this about looking forwards. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. He's going to come again. So in Matthew 24, Jesus talks about how this zone of time for his return might feel. Look at Matthew 24. Two men will be working in the field. One will be taken, one left behind. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken, one left behind. So stay awake, alert. You have no idea what day your master will show up. Then he gives an example. But you know this. You know that if the homeowner had known what time of night the burglar would arrive, he would have been there with his dogs to prevent the break-in. Be vigilant just like that. You have no idea when the Son of Man is going to show up. So when you see this communion, it's more than just juice cracker in a prayer. It's a declaration. 
I'm looking back. I'm looking up. I'm looking forward. I am orienting my life for the return of Christ to happen at any moment. When Jesus returns, that is not the time to get ready. That's the time you better be ready. So he's saying, be like the person on the lookout. Like if you knew that somebody was going to try to break into your house tonight, I guarantee you wouldn't just be like, eh, TV off, nighty night, sleep, it's no problem. I needed a new TV anyway, they can take that one. You'd be up, you'd be ready, you'd have Simply Safe armed. You'd have all the things ready, right? Some of you would be extra ready, but we won't get into that. <laughs> be ready like that is what Jesus is saying. So it brings us to our one big action. Write this down. This is what we're going to do. Today, I will take communion today and worship God this week. We're going to take communion as a family this morning. But before we do, I want to encourage you to get your phone out. And as we're moving through Passion Week this week, Dan, can I borrow your communication card real quick? As we're moving through Passion Week this week, I want to encourage you, take the very bottom part of this communication card and put together a flow for you to go through. It's a Passion Week plan, so it walks through the days, and there's some scripture, scripture references and passages that you should read, think about your own life. So I want to encourage you to do that this week. So as you do that, grab your phone and hit this code. This is going to go to a Spotify playlist. And the songs that are on that playlist are songs that we play here at Go Church. And I wanna encourage you this week to just hit this list, man, on your way to work, dropping kids off at the gym. Maybe you're doing it during devotions. Maybe you take this list. You start going through these scriptures. You're listening to this. Make some time this week to worship God, to prepare your heart for Resurrection Sunday on Easter. Go through all of these scriptures and try to get a feeling for what Jesus went through for us. So when we come together next Sunday, next Sunday is party Sunday. It's resurrection Sunday. That's what it is. This week is feeling the, the gravity and the seriousness of what Jesus has done for us. Understanding what he went through for you and for me. That's this week. So let's encapsulate this week with worship. We're gonna take communion today. I wanna to encourage you, go ahead, underneath your seat are the elements. It's in a little plastic cup. Go ahead and reach down and grab that. Learn from my mistake. Don't make the rookie mistake of, of pulling the juice lid too hard and spilling it on yourself. Been there. So here's what I want to encourage you to do. Go ahead and peel back, take the cracker, have it available, and then peel back the juice part and just hold both of those things steady. I want you to just hold it in your hands and I want you to listen to me. I want you to close your eyes and just listen to me. The Bible says that we should examine our hearts before we remember through the taking of communion. I want you to steady yourself, to still your mind. I want you to close your eyes, open your heart. I want you to think about this. Jesus, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Jesus didn't give 100% of his life for 99% of yours. Maybe there's an area of your life that you've been doing your own thing. You've been walking in rebellion. You've been walking in sin. You've been doing whatever your, your selfishness wants to do. God has healing for that. God has forgiveness for that. God has love for that. That's why God sent his one and only son. It's not because he's frustrated with you. It's because he loves you. He loved you so much that he proved it by sending his one and only son, not to just live, but to give his life as that blameless, sinless, behold the lamb of God life to pay the price for your sin and for my sin. And the Bible says that if we will confess with our mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, if we'll believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. And this is the gospel, that Jesus came and he did live that life, perfect, without sin, tempted in every way, did not fall one time. 
He gave that perfect life on the cross for you and for me. He paid our bill for our sin, a bill that we could never pay. No amount of good deeds could ever pay it. Good people don't go to heaven. Forgiven people go to heaven. And he died on the cross and they peeled his body off of that tree and they put him into a tomb that was guarded. And on the third day, through the power of the Holy Spirit, God raised Jesus Christ back to life. And he is alive and he has a plan for you. And it is to know you, to have a relationship with you. Jesus didn't give his life to start a religion. He gave it to start a relationship with you. So now before we take communion, this is the time where you say, is my heart right? I want to give you an opportunity to pray a prayer of faith to make Jesus Christ the Lord, the leader of your life, to pray a prayer that says, I am submitting my life in its totality to Jesus. I'm gonna follow him the rest of my days. If you're here today and you wanna make Jesus Christ the Lord and the leader of your life, I want you to pray this with me out loud right now. Say, Jesus, thank you for speaking to my heart. I ask that you would forgive me of every sin. I am making you the Lord and the leader of my life. And I'm going to live for you the rest of my days. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks again for listening to this week's message. To stay in the know with Go Church, be sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook at letsgo.church. You can also download our app from the App Store by searching Go Church. Have a great week and God bless.